Okay, let's get started here. So your immune system needs vitamin D to fight COVID and vitamin D needs magnesium. Let's take a closer look. So the bottom line, I'm just gonna say it up front. I know video watchers don't last very long. I want you to get the key point right off the bat. A vitamin D level over 30 supports the immune system and take your vitamin D with the biggest meal of the day for absorption. If you take it with water, it's just gonna get pooped out. Magnesium is required to activate vitamin D. So consider a thousand units of vitamin D with magnesium glycinate at dinner. Now stay tuned for all the details on why this matters. So in case you missed it, vitamin D saves lives. The Cochrane Review definitively showed that vitamin D decreases mortality in the elderly overall, not just during COVID-19. A review of over 25 journals published in the British Medical Journal showed that vitamin D supplements protects against common colds, including common coronaviruses. Vitamin D deficiency, less than 30, is associated with an over two times likelihood of positive COVID-19, and that was in the Journal of the American Medical Association. And then multiple small trials have revealed that vitamin D supplementation at the time of COVID is associated with up to 50% less progression to needing oxygen, intestine care unit, and less mortality in hospitalized patients. So vitamin D is probably a good idea. Now, if you're interested in all the actual research, I did a one hour webinar. It's on my YouTube channel and you can check that out. Here's the key point. Magnesium is needed to activate vitamin D. So this is a graphic from the Journal of the American Osteopathic Association. Look at the top. You can get vitamin D from the sun or through diet or supplement. Now, honestly, through the sun in winter, you'd pretty much have to stand naked under the sun at noon for at least an hour to get a thousand units of vitamin D. And most people aren't doing that. The vitamin D gets absorbed into the bloodstream, goes through its first conversion in the liver, that's in the middle, goes through a second conversion at the bottom, which is the kidney, to its active form, which is 125 uh, dihydroxy D. Now you'll see here circled that each conversion step requires magnesium. Magnesium is a cofactor for enzymes in the liver and kidneys that convert vitamin D into its active form. Now, why does this matter? Well, 75% of the US is magnesium deficient and that's according to the World Health Organization. What does it mean to get enough? Well, the RDA recommended daily allowance, this is the minimum, minimum of 320 milligrams in women and 425 milligrams in men. Now, what might magnesium deficiency feel like? See if you have any of these symptoms. I most commonly see constipation, heart palpitations, hypertension, leg cramps, particularly after exercise, osteoporosis, fatigue, neurological issues like migraines and seizures and memory issues, but also anxiety, stress, insomnia. And most of us have had some of that during the pandemic. Diuretic medications such as furosemide, Lasix, and hydrochlorothiazide also cause magnesium deficiency. So what foods have magnesium? Well, the top bang for your buck is probably pumpkin seeds, um, chia, flax, almonds, cashews, beans and tofu, leafy greens, avocado, whole grains. My favorite is dark chocolate. But the question is, are you making, even if you're a healthy eater, are you getting enough? So here's an example of what I might eat in a healthy day. Maybe start out the day with a cup of organic plain yogurt, have a nice little chicken spinach salad with pumpkin seeds and avocado, maybe some almonds as a snack, and then a healthy dinner with brown rice, kidney beans, salmon, and broccoli, ending the night with a little bit of dark chocolate. All of that ends up at around 431 milligrams. Um, do you eat like this every day? I certainly try to, but if you don't, you might wanna consider a supplement. So in terms of magnesium supplement tips, look for the second part on your bottle. So turn the bottle to the back and see what it says. Magnesium oxide is by far the most common type of magnesium out on the market. It's cheap, it's effective, but may cause diarrhea and bloating. So I like to choose the magnesium type based on what I'm trying to treat. If someone is a little constipated, magnesium citrate is a good choice. If someone has anxiety, sleep, um, stress issues, and doesn't need any laxative effects, magnesium glycinate is probably my all-time favorite. Magnesium malic, um, malic acid is used in the Krebs cycle, which makes ATP, which is energy. So my patients with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome benefit from this. 
magnesium L3 and 8 goes through the blood brain barrier a little bit better. So it's great for concussion, memory, and mood issues. And magnesium taurate, taurate is used in the heart. Um, so there's some studies that there's benefit there. Also great for the brain as well. And as we saw, up to 400 milligrams a day can make sense for a lot of people. So again, the bottom line, vitamin D level over 30 supports the immune system. Take your vitamin D with the biggest meal for absorption. You need that magnesium to activate the vitamin D. And for most people, a thousand units of vitamin D at a minimum together with some magnesium glycinate makes sense at dinner time. For more information on lifestyle supplement factors in COVID-19 and beyond, please check out my YouTube channel. I also have a webinar specifically for pregnant women, which includes a lot of data on what's safe for pregnancy and to not only boost your immune system, but have a healthy pregnancy overall. See you there.